Hi foodie friends, Jessica here with Savory Experiments and today we are making salmon poke bowls. But before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on our videos. We love to hear from you. So what is a salmon poke bowl? Well, poke literally means to slice. So we are gonna slice and dice some things and put them in a bowl. They can be made with a million different types of fish. Today we are using a sockeye salmon, but red snapper, shrimp, scallops, and other types of salmon like Atlantic salmon and tuna are also extremely common. Let's get started. First, I'm gonna put on my gloves here because I am dealing with some raw fish. So this is a sockeye salmon. It is wild caught, which is why it's a little bit leaner. It's thinner than an Atlantic caught salmon or a farm raised salmon. And it is this vibrant, almost neon hue, which is pretty cool. I love that for my poke bowls because I wanna have as much color as possible when I put them together. That's really what I aim for. But it also makes it a little bit more challenging to dice up. So we're gonna fillet this fish. I'm actually gonna cut this in half just to make it a tad more manageable. And as you can see here, it's got some little lines in it. That's just because it's been deboned and that is perfectly fine. This is what we call a sushi grade salmon. All that means is that this was humanely caught and very quickly processed. And after being processed, it was frozen. Freezing any kind of parasitic fish will kill all of the germs and you don't have to worry about them having yuckies in them, basically. So I'm gonna continue filleting this. The cuts don't have to be perfect and quite frankly, they shouldn't be because this is a wild caught fish and it's not perfect and it's not hugely meaty. Sockeye salmon has a much more robust flavor than Atlantic caught or farm raised. So if you're not a fishy type of person, sockeye is probably not for you. You probably wanna go for the farm raised Atlantic, which is more of an orangey hue and a little bit milder in flavor. So we're gonna finish filleting this, this guy here. And as you can see, I'm putting it into a bowl on the side. And this one, this one's a little bit thinner, so I'm not gonna get perfect cubes, but you know what? It's all going to the same place, not a big deal. I'm gonna put it all in this bowl and it doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. We are now going to make the poke sauce, which is a really simple blend of things you probably already have in your pantry. We are going to start with one tablespoon of rice wine, Ooh, or a little bit more. This is a really forgiving recipe. If you've got a little bit more or a little bit less of flavors that you really, really like, no one's going to tell or care. And this is toasted sesame oil. Again, one tablespoon of that. Next is soy sauce. I'm doing two tablespoons of soy sauce, another very acidic unami flavor going in there. This is a low sodium soy sauce, so it doesn't have a huge punch of salt. And mirin, which is a Japanese kind of heavy liquid there that gives it a lot of special flavor. Next, we have the whites of three scallions. When you're chopping those up, make sure that you keep the greens because we're gonna use those to top our poke bowl. And garlic. How do we measure garlic? With our hearts. The recipe calls for one clove. If you wanna do two, I won't tell anybody. And about one teaspoon of grated ginger. That ginger wants to stick on in there. Let's get him out. There we go. Lastly, fourth cup of lemon. Of course, fresh lemon. So we all know citruses start to lose their tangy flavor the moment that they are harvested and juice has the same impact. So the stuff you buy in the bottle, the concentrate, while it's great for some things, doesn't pack as much flavor as the fresh stuff. Get it all on in there. Okay, perfect. I'm just gonna whisk it up. You have two options at this point. You can either use this to marinate your salmon, and I am going to put a tiny bit on in here. You don't need a lot. It's 
basically like making a ceviche. Because there's so much acidity in this poke sauce, it's gonna cook the salmon a little bit and it's gonna absorb those flavors really super fast. So if you do decide to marinate your fish for a little while, don't go over an hour or you're gonna end up with too much flavor and your fish will start to disintegrate because of all that acid. Okay, we're gonna set these aside and start building our bowl. Mini poke bowls start with jasmine rice, which is a long green wild rice. Some people call it sticky rice. As you can see here, I'm gonna pick up a bite. This is my bowl here, so it's fine. Look at how sticky it is. It literally all sticks together. So I went ahead and made this rice ahead of time, and now I am going to top it with the real poke, right? The diced and sliced stuff. And you have so many options here. I'm starting with an English cucumber very thinly sliced, because after I go in on these poke bowls, I don't want to use a knife. So anything that I'm going to put into it needs to be bite-sized. And then radishes. So I cut these radishes up like matchsticks. I really like my poke bowls to be pretty, and that means that I'm gonna add some variation in the color, the shape, and the size, and the cut of what I'm adding, which is why my mango is diced. I love having a sweet element. Oh, got a cucumber in there, it's okay. No one ever said no to another slice of cucumber, did they? If you don't have mango, I also love using pineapple, another good tropical fruit, and of course avocado. We all know I love avocado. I'll probably end up putting the entire avocado on my bowl, but for right now we're just gonna do a half of an avocado, thinly sliced, you can dice that as well if you'd like. All those healthy fats, nice and creamy, okay? Set that aside. I know that we haven't marinated our fish very long, but we're going to pretend magically that they're all ready done. And I'm gonna put that beautiful color of salmon right there in the center. Lovely. Top it with the greens of those scallions. I cut these on a diagonal. They're nice and crunchy. They're gonna have a pretty pure onion taste, which gives another fun element to the dish since we don't have any other onion in there. We also have sesame seeds, another crunch, but also they look pretty. If you have black sesame seeds, use some black sesame seeds too. And lastly, this is a chipotle aioli. Why is my chipotle aioli in a bag? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I made this from scratch today, and instead of using mayonnaise, I used plain Greek yogurt. So it's a tad bit healthier for us. And I'm gonna snip the corner of this Ziploc bag, and I'm gonna use this to create a pretty drizzle on my bowl instead of just dolloping it on there. And there we go. If you really like the soy flavors, you can go ahead and put just a little bit more sauce onto your poke bowl. And if not, this should be enough because it is totally packed with a lot of flavors, a lot of colors, and a whole lot of goodness. From my kitchen to yours, have a great day.